Joy in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria. The Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of impact academy for youth, young adults, and professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT. All broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms. With Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. We thank you because we have come to the place of victory. We have come to the place of triumph. Lord, I bring every brother, every sister here before you. Make your people strong, Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We come to a very important chapter of scripture, not only an important chapter in the book of Daniel, but in the whole Bible. You will find that this is one of the chapters that stand out very clearly. And also there is so much in the chapter that uh, the church needs today and that every Christian needs today. The greatest need of our generation is uh, faith or we can say even it's conviction we need men and women of strong faith of unshakable unsha conviction and all this we find in this chapter that is daniel chapter 3 there is much in the chapter that i will not be able to take too much time in the introduction that i want to move in into the chapter itself. The topic is a firm faith in the fairy furnace. As I read through the chapter, there were a lot of options for me, possibilities for me, that is a lot of approaches. I could talk about the fury of the king and then talk about the faith of uh, the companions of Daniel and then talk about the faithfulness of the king of kings. And uh, as you look at the chapter, you will see that uh, there was a call from the world, actually from the emperor of the empire, from the king that ruled at that time, that the people should fall down and worship, but worship an idol. And then there was the consecration and the commitment of these three Hebrew children. And they said, no, we're not going to fall down to any image. Of course, you know, the uh, king became angry. And he decided he will teach them a lesson. And instead of teaching them a lesson, I think he learned a lesson himself. And the whole people, the Babylonians, they learned a lesson that they will never forget. I think you'll learn a lesson too. But I believe that the lesson you are going to learn will be positive in your life in Jesus' name. And then we'll see the compensation of the Lord for the people that were faithful. But you see, we're going to divide the chapter into three parts. Number one, the unrighteous decree. The unrighteous decree. Natural will find from verses 1 to 7. He raised up an idol. He raised up an image and he commanded everybody to fall down and worship. He said, the moment you hear the music, fall down and hit the ground and prostrate and worship. But then there were some people that said, no, we are not going to follow the majority to do evil. We have a different plan of action and we have a different purpose in life. And we have a different power backing us up. And therefore you come to point number two. An uncommon declaration. Actually, as you look at the chapter, you'll find the king making his own declaration. 
you will find these Hebrew children making their own declaration. And as you think about everything, would I say, everything was in the superlative. That is, the king himself, he made the highest claim and the greatest thing that an emperor at that time could ever say and the greatest threat he could ever give out. And then the other people, the Hebrew children, three of them, they made a kind of declaration that more than matched his own declaration. And I call this second point an uncommon declaration. Verses 8 to 18. Now the third point, if we have time, we'll spend the whole time on the third point. And I think we're going to spend some time on it. I don't know how the meeting this morning may turn out. It may turn out to be a teaching meeting. It may turn out to be preaching. It may turn out to be revival time. Because um, you see this point number three is an unsurpassed deliverance. Unsurpassed deliverance. Number one, unrighteous decree. Number two, uncommon declaration. Number three, unsurpassed deliverance. Let's look at it now from point number one. As we look at the unrighteous decree, we're reading from Daniel chapter 3, and we're looking at it from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth three uh, thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of uh, Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent to gather together the princes and the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes and the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the, of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. That gives you the introduction to the chapter itself. A few years before this time, you remember, there was the great decline in the midst of the children of God, the people of Judah. And the Lord decided he was going to punish them. And so there was a great deportation that the people of Judah were brought into Babylon. Then you have seen as we studied chapter 1, you find the great decision that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they had made. And because of that, the Lord rewarded them. How did he reward them? He gave them a special impact. He gave them a special insight. He gave them a special intelligence. And he gave them a special influence in the land. And then you find in chapter 2 that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Actually, that dream came from the Lord because the Lord was about to reveal to him that it was the beginning of an era, the beginning of an epoch, or the beginning of an age. He was a saw an image. And the head was that of gold. And then you have other parts of the body of the image. The interpretation eventually came. And when the interpretation came, it was told, you are that head of gold. Apparently, for a brief time, for a short period of time, he seemed to acknowledge the God of heaven. And as he acknowledged the God of heaven in chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 26. From verse 26, we're told that the king answered, and he said unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, and art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen? And the interpretation thereof Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king but there is a god in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known unto the king nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days the dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these and then he gave him the interpretation 
After he gave him that interpretation, Nebuchadnezzar was so grateful, and it appeared he was going to acknowledge the God of heaven. In fact, he was going to give a public testimony that this God of heaven was a very great God. Look at verse 47. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of the truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing that uh, thou couldest reveal the secret. He acknowledged the existence of God. But here you need to be careful now. There are many public figures that rise up to give a testimony. And then the Christian world or the Christian church is uh, too quick to raise them up and take them everywhere to give testimony to everybody. As if that is the thing that will bring people to know the Lord. But you know, when a politician stands up and he says, I am born again to you. I acknowledge the God of heaven to you. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe we need to give him time. So that we will see whether that testimony has behind it hypocrisy or strategy wanting to win our votes or maybe it is genuine time will test and time will tell in the case of Nebuchadnezzar that testimony that he gave to the God of heaven and the God of kings that testimony did not stand the test of time it appeared superficial because now we come into chapter 3 and he raised up an image and then we're told about that image look at verse 1 we're told about the height, six score cubits. And that means, uh, three score rather, that means three times twenty. And that is what? That's sixty. And then you find it, it says the breadth of it, six cubits. And it's uh, very interesting for you to note that as you look at this chapter, you find the six, six. Six, six, that's sixty-six. But then, as you look at the kind of a music that was going to produce, and he said, if you hear the sound of, and then he mentioned those musical instruments, if you count them, you are going to have six. And when you have six, six, and you have another six, you now begin to wonder whether there is a relationship between this Daniel chapter 3 we are reading and Revelation chapter 13, because chapter 13 of Revelation talks about 666, which means then you are talking about the kingdoms of the world, and you are talking about the beginning of the kingdoms of the Gentiles, and you are talking about the culmination, the climax, the final end of the kingdoms of the world, and you are going to have the Antichrist, and you are going to have the beast, and then there is a warning for the faithful people that you should be very careful, because somebody else is coming, that also will be a man of the sixes. Now, if we look at what he gave out, you will see that uh, he called the people, and he said, you must fall down and worship. He called them to worship, and he didn't just make it optional. He was making it a national religion. He was uh, making it a continental religion. He was even making it a worldwide religion. That everyone, anywhere in all the provinces, anywhere you could, uh, you could hear the sound, you hear that sound, you must fall down and worship. In Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10, reading there from verse 1. This refers to uh, the lords of the people that make unrighteous decrees. Isaiah 10, 1, warn to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievous uh, grievousness which they have prescribed and so you see that Nebuchadnezzar made an unrighteous decree and he prescribed that for everyone I'm sure you know that the word of God through and through is against idolatry against idol worship and therefore the word of the Lord was against what he was prescribing, decreeing, commanding for the people uh, to observe and to do. In Psalm 115, Psalm 115, 115, reading from verse 3. The sorrows from verse 3, but our God 
is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he has pleased. They are idols, a silver and gold. The work of men's hands. They have, they have mouths, but they cannot speak. Eyes have they, but they cannot see. They see not. They have ears, but they hear not. No seas have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. The golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, although it was a gigantic thing, it must have been an ugly thing. Do you realize that? Because you see, if you, if you look at the dimensions of uh, that image, it says the height is uh, 60 uh, cubits. And then it says the breadth is uh, 6 cubits. And for those of you who have not forgotten proportion and ratio, uh, when you take the height to the breadth, the ratio is, what's that ratio? Tell me out loud. Uh, some of you have forgotten. It's a uh, ratio 10 to 1. Do you know the average person, if you look at the average uh, boy, average girl, average man, average uh, woman, the ratio is generally 5 to uh, one, uh, you can you can try that and look at your height and look at the breadth and you'll find that if you are average, uh, you'll be ratio five to one. I know that there are some people that uh, they don't uh, they are not like that. They are very big like this. They are ratio three to one, but but the average is uh, ratio five to one. But you see this thing that is set up, you find ratio ten to one. That thing must have been very thin and very lean, uh, almost representing man, because man spiritually and morally is ugly. And that thing was grotesque and very ugly. But then, not only that it was uh, ugly, mouth cannot talk, feet cannot move. You have to plant it there and stage it there for the people to come now and worship. Then in verse 8, that is Psalm one one. Five verse eight. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. The people that make those idols, whether they are of gold, of iron, of silver, of wood, of stone, whatever it is, they are like them. And now he told the people they must fall down and worship. Look at it now from Daniel chapter three. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 4. Then an error cried aloud. To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, one, flute, two, harp, three, sackbut, five, uh, four, uh, satri, five, and dulcima, uh, six, and all kinds of music. Now that's not, uh, that's not talking about... Uh, instrument that is talking of what comes out of those six musical instruments the musical instruments are six but then they can produce all kinds of music depending on the rhythm and depending on the time signature and depending on the nature of the music they were going to produce and now he told them in that same verse five it says ye fall down and worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, and the tree, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. I want to remind you that music is a good thing. And music actually is a gift of God. But then the devil takes something good, he perverts it, he corrupts it, and then hands it over to the world. And the world, they will destroy themselves with those good things. Now do you see that music that had been used even from the Old Testament times, earlier times in the Old Testament, that the music that had been used for good purposes, here Nebuchadnezzar used it for idol worship. And he said, when you hear the sound of those musical instruments, you fall down and you worship. We ought to be very careful, because the devil has done the same thing today. 
He has taken music. He has perverted it. He has prostituted it. And then he's making use of it now to damn and to destroy the souls of young people and the souls of men and women. Now we've seen that he decreed an unrighteous decree. But now we're going to go to number two, which is an uncommon declaration. An uncommon declaration. I want you to notice what is happening here. What is happening here, actually, you could, uh, you need to go to the background to understand. Because in chapter 2, Daniel had interpreted the dream that the magicians and the astrologers could not interpret. And the king was so happy, he promoted him. Not only that he promoted him, he also promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at that in chapter 2 and in verse 40. Uh, verse 48 and verse 49. And the king made Daniel a great man. And he gave him many great gifts. And made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. And uh, the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. You see, he promoted Daniel. And Daniel became so great beyond and above all the people he had met in Babylon. You know, that's going to create jealousy, envy. And they'll be looking for whatever they can get to point to the king's sin. The person you have promoted, they don't respect you. They don't honor you. See what they're doing. Now in verse 49, then Daniel requested of the king. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the, king, in the gate of the king. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been promoted. And uh, they were over the affairs of the realm with uh, Daniel. Now this uh, thing came, and the experts have told us there were about 300,000 people that were available to just knock the ground, fall and prostrate at the sound of the musical instrument. And uh, you find out, for example, if uh, we have about 300,000 people and everybody had the sound of music and they fell down lying on the ground. I don't mean sitting down, kneeling down. I mean really prostrating. And you have only three people out of 300,000 sticking out and standing up is going to be conspicuous. Everybody is going to know about it. And uh, these uh, three children, Hebrew children, they were not ashamed of what they believed. I pray you will be like that. That no matter how many people are falling down worshipping the devil and worshipping an image, you will stand for the truth in Jesus' name. Uh, because of that, uh, between verses 8 and 18, there are two things, major things, we are going to discover there. Number one, a devious conspiracy. A devious conspiracy. All these people now haven't noticed uh, what happened and they knew this is the time. To get these three people, foreigners, that have come into our midst and they are promoted, they have been promoted uh, above us. This is the time to get them into trouble. And then you'll find the second thing when Nebuchadnezzar heard about it, there was a direct confrontation. A direct confrontation. Now let's look at it from verse 8. Daniel chapter 3, reading from verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and they accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Those hypocrites, that's what they always said to the They knew he was going to die. They said, live forever. And uh, they said, thou, O king, has made a decree, an unrighteous decree, that every man that uh, shall hear the sound of the cornage, and the flute, and the harp, the sackbut, the satris, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a, bon of a bonny furry ponies. There are three, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over, you see the jealousy. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. You see the envy now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, O king, although you have exalted them, 
Although you have promoted them, although they are foreigners and you have even set them above your own people of your own tribe, you know what they have done? Three accusations. Number one, they have not regarded thee. Number two, they serve not thy gods. Number three, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And that was the devious conspiracy. You see, these uh, three Hebrew children, they decided they will not fall down. They decided they were not going to worship the image of the king. And uh, it was soon discovered. And when they found out, somebody had to tell the king about them. And uh, you see the three accusations they brought against them. And uh, they said, they don't even regard you. They don't respect you. And if you know anything about um, proud people like Nebuchadnezzar, that thing will get Nebuchadnezzar. That is the thing that will make him angry and furious. Can there be anyone in this realm, in this uh, empire, that will challenge my authority and not regard me? Not only that, your gods that everybody worships, they will not worship. They will not serve your gods. Not only that they will not serve in a continual way, the present one we're doing now. The present worship we're offering now to the image you have set up, they will not even worship your golden image. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar decided that he had to check up whether that thing was true. And he was going to give a second chance to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Number one, he wanted to find out whether that could be true. Whether there could be anybody on the face of the earth that knew how wicked he was and that knew the threat he had given out that if anybody did not fall down to worship, he will throw him into the burning furry furnace. He wanted to check up whether there were some people that took madness with religion. Some people that were fanatical coming from the Hebrew side, that will say no at the risk of losing their lives. So look at verse 13. Now this is the direct confrontation. And uh, then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury, you understand? If we say in his rage, that's enough. If we say in his fury, that's enough. If we say in his rage and fury, there was something very bad here. And these people would already, they were already smelling the fire. It says, in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true? I can't believe this. Nebuchadnezzar said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I think, it's, I think it's a joke. I don't think this one is true. Is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I know you didn't mean it. Maybe you didn't prostrate uh, low enough for people to know that you really did not mean to disobey me. Is it true? Can I get a word from you? What these people are saying about you, that you will not worship idol? Am I, am I hearing right? I will give you a chance now to tell me by yourself. Is it true? Oh, Shadrach, you are young. Don't you love your life? Life is just beginning with you. Don't you see the future? You are going to waste your life. You play with Nebuchadnezzar. You play with fire. You play with untimely death. You play with cruelty and tyranny. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, tell me out now face to face. Let me hear from you. Is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, do ye not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, let's forget the past. I'll give you a second chance. The one that you did that was childishness. I know it's the foolishness of fanatical religion. I know you are still trying to remember home. You are still trying to remember what they taught you in the land of Israel. Let's forget the past. Although I'm normally a tyrant and cruel, but I'm willing to even overlook that. Once you, because the music is still on, and the opportunity is still there, if you will fall down and worship, everything will be over. Verse 15, now, if he be ready, 
that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the harp and the sackbut and the sultry and the dual seaman and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, that will be fine. It will escape. But if ye would not worship, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a bony fairy furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now, the battle has led the hand of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The battle has passed into the hands of the Almighty God. The battle has now gone beyond Babylon. It has reached the presence of the throne of the Almighty God. The battle now has uh, led the realm of the magicians and the Chaldeans and Nebuchadnezzar. The battle now has caught the attention of the myriads of the angels of God in heaven. The battle is no more for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The battle now is in the hand of the Almighty God himself. With that question, with that question, if you will not fall down and worship the same hour, I will cast you into the midst of the burning fairy furnace and tell me, who is that God? To start with, let's try to reason with Nebuchadnezzar. Before we look into getting to the battleground, who is that God? Chapter 1, Daniel, verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand, into, the, into his hand, which was part of the vessels of the house of God. Nebuchadnezzar, who is that God? It's the God that gave you the victory. And the God that made you to take the children of Judah and take them captive. You've met him before, you didn't recognize him. He passed by you, you didn't know him. He even gave you victory and you didn't know it was he that gave you the victory. Are you asking Nebuchadnezzar, who is that God? Chapter 2 and verse 47. The king answered unto Daniel, of a truth is it that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldest reveal the secret. Who is that God? It's the God that revealed the secret. Do you have short memory, Nebuchadnezzar? Don't you know that what you threatened was that we are going to kill all the Chaldeans, all the magicians, except they were able to reveal the dream to you? And didn't they tell you that there is no king, there is no emperor anywhere that will require these of any of his wise men to recollect a dream that they didn't dream, that another person dreamed? And then Daniel came up and he gave you the interpretation. Are you asking who is that God from your own mouth came that this God is a God of gods and the God of kings? Then he said, who is that God? Turn please to chapter 3. And in chapter 3 of um, Daniel, verse 29, Therefore, I make a decree that every people and nation and language will speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then he says, Shall be caught in pieces, and their houses shall be made a donkey, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. That's the God. He will learn more about that God later, in fact, in chapter 4. Look at chapter 4. And we're reading now from verse 35. At the end of the day, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. Who is that God? He is the Most High. It came out of his mouth. You don't have any battle to fight. Once anybody challenges your God, heaven will rise up and defend itself. God will rise up and defend himself. The only angels of God in heaven will rise up and they will defend the most high. And then he himself now said, he called him the most high and he said, I praise and honor him that liveth forever is the everlasting God whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. But start at seven. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. He called him the most high. 
He called him the God who reveals the secret. He called him the everlasting God. And he called him the, the king of heaven. All whose works are true. The true God. And his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride. Tell me the rest. Is able to abase. He asked the question, oh, is that God? And many, many answers came to that one single question that you will never forget. Now, as we see these uh, three uh, Hebrew children, now the challenge has come. Because now we have an uncommon declaration. He, Nebuchadnezzar, had made his own declaration and he had said, if any of you will dare to defy my commandment and decree, I will cast him into the born in furnace. Who is that God? As I look at the answer of these uh, three Hebrew children, verse uh, 16, verse 17, and verse 18, uh, three things I want to point your attention to. Number one, fearlessness. Fearlessness. Number two, faith. That is faith in God. Number three is fidelity. Fidelity or faithfulness. Look at uh, verse 16. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, did they say live forever? And ah, that's what the people were deceiving him. That's what they said. Whenever they said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, they will say, live forever. These people knew that he was not going to live forever. So they said, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. After all, this is not a battle anymore. After all, we're not involved in this anymore. After all, you're not fighting against us. You're fighting against the Almighty God. After all, the commandment not to worship idol is not my thing. It's not something I thought out. It's not a private policy or principle with me. It's the commandment of the Almighty God Himself. We are not involved. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. It is between you and God. They were able courageously to face this tyrant and this cruel king because there was no fear in them. You see, you'll be called upon in your own life to face people and to face challenges. If you have the fear of man, you will be crushed and you will crumble. You will fall to the ground. But if you have faith in God, you will not be afraid in Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. The fear of man bringeth a snare. If you are afraid of men, you'll not be able to take your stand. You'll not be able to live the Christian life. You will be hypocritical. You will not be able to stand for what you know to be the truth. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Our trust will be in the Lord. In Daniel chapter 3 and in verse 17, we find their faith, the expression of their faith. If it be so, if you stand true to your word, if you do what you say you want to do, if you open that furnace and you throw us inside there, if it be so, our God whom we serve, is able to deliver us. That's why we got that chorus. He is able. 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 Is able to deliver. And he will deliver in Jesus name. If it be so. Our God whom we serve. Is able to deliver us. From the bony furry furnace. And he will deliver us. Out of the out of thy hand. O king. How could they be that sure. How could they have such confidence in God? Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. And in verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Amen. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Amen. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's what they were having their confidence on. What's the confidence of a child of God today? Because these three Hebrew children, they said, Our God is able. Is your God able? Is your God able to deliver you? In Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 
Verse 20, if you don't know this verse, you have not read your New Testament. If you don't know this verse, you have not read your Bible. If you do not memorize this verse, what are you going to do when the devil challenges you? What are you going to do when the powers of darkness challenge you? What are you going to do when the devil challenges your prayer and your faith? Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us is there a power that is working in you now you can guess by now that i like numbers a lot and i cannot uh, preach without uh, pointing out when i see numbers i'm fascinated therefore i'm going to play with some numbers here get ready in verse 20 it says our lord is able to do what we ask that's one if that's all I have in the Bible, if that's all I have in that verse, then you can run around Jericho walls and Jericho walls will fall in Jesus' name. But it's more than that. Number two, our Lord is able to do all what we ask or think. Not only what you are asking, even while you are proposing it in your mind, you are thinking into your mind. You are meditating upon it. You are desiring it. You are wishing. You are not even speaking out. I wish God could do this for me. Our God is able to do what we ask or think. Number three, our God is able to do all that we ask or think. If God will give us 70%, of what we're asking and thinking, I think that would be wonderful. If he would give us 80 or 90 or 95 percent, I think that would be great. But then our God is able to do all 100 percent of what we're asking and thinking. And that's a wonderful promise and privilege that we have. But it has not stopped. Number four now, the Lord is able to do above all. That we ask or think. Number five, our Lord is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Number six, our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. I pray that power will work in you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Now we come back to Daniel chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 18. We've seen the fearlessness. We've seen the faith. Now we see the fidelity or the faithfulness. In, uh, on the part of the three Hebrew children, verse 18. But if not, we know our God is able to deliver. But if not, be it known unto thee, O God, that we will not serve thy gods, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What the children, what the Hebrew children were saying is they said, Nebuchadnezzar, you don't understand this God. We don't fully understand him either. Plan A is able to deliver us. Plan B, he may not even desire that he will deliver us the way we think he will deliver us. And God may not choose plan A, he may choose plan B. And you see, the, as you read the story, do you see that he did not deliver them out of the fire, but he delivered them in the fire. Have you noticed that? So they said, there is a plan A. If that one doesn't come through, there is a plan B. And we know that whether it is plan A, or plan B, or even plan C, or even plan D, or even plan G, our God will never fail. I said our God will never fail. That's the faithfulness of the people that believe in God. In Job chapter, Job chapter 13, and in verse 15. 15, though he slay me, you think I'm going to backslide, yet I will trust him. Though he slay me, you think I'm going to grumble and complain, yet I will trust him. Though he slay me, you think I'm going to question him, yet I will trust him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Now we come to point number three, which is unsurpassed deliverance. Unsurpassed deliverance. The Lord delivered them. And the Lord will deliver you. I said the Lord will deliver you. Look at it from verse 19. It says, Then 
was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his beast was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and he commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than he was, it was wont to be heated. That man was really angry. Uh, you know, uh, look up here. If you want to punish uh, somebody by fire, what should you do? You shouldn't make the fire too hot. You should put them in that fire and make it burn slowly so they can suffer for a long time. He wanted them to really suffer, really suffer. And he, as he got angry, he lost his senses. He forgot that if you are going to really make them suffer, lower the heat and let them die quietly and die, no, not quietly, but slowly. But then he heated the thing seven times more that even the people outside the furnace, when they cast them inside, the flame killed those people. Then the people you are throwing are not going to suffer at all. You see, when people are angry, they lose their senses. The place they want to go and the thing they want to achieve, they do the exact opposite. So he heated that thing seven times hotter and he commanded the most mighty men that were uh, in, his, um, in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to cast them into the burning furry ponies. Then these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hats and their and their other garments and they were cast into the midst of the burning furry furnace therefore because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot the flame of the fire slew those men that took up shadrach meshach and abednego and these three men shadrach meshach and abednego fell down bound into the midst of the bony furry furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and he spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? There they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see. I see what? I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like, I said it's like, I said it's like the Son of God. I don't know how we're going to end, but let me give this to you. Number one, there was a record of their deliverance. Number two, there was reason, there were reasons for their deliverance. Number three, there were results of their deliverance. Number one, there was a record of their deliverance. They said, our God is able to deliver us. And as we look through what I'm doing now, I'm just uh, looking through verses 19 to 30. And you know the story yourself, so very rapidly, I'm going to give you the points, what I see in those verses, in the record of the deliverance. Number one, the anger of the king. He was furious. In fact, the Bible says he was full of fury. And his uh, facial appearance changed. He was so angry that uh, the facial appearance totally changed. And then he commanded they should hit that thing seven times over. Number two, the activity of the king. He commanded the capable men, the competent men in his army to bind these uh, three Hebrew children and throw them into the fire. Number three, the amazement of the king. He got up, he looked in, and he saw that although these people that threw them in, they had died, but these other men, they didn't die. Only the court that belonged to Nebuchadnezzar, that bound those people, only that cord was burnt in the fire. But they themselves, and their clothes, and everything there that was personal to them, nothing was burnt at all. The amazement of the king. Do you know, if anybody throws you into any fire of affliction, God will get you out in Jesus' name. 
not only that, you will not lose anything, only their property, their court binding you is what you are going to lose. Number four, the acknowledgement of the king. He himself, he acknowledged. If you see what he said in verse 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Number five, the announcement of the king. Now, what did he announce after the whole thing came true? Verse 29, therefore, I make a decree that uh, every people, nation, language will speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, shall be caught in pieces, and uh, their houses shall be made a dung hill because, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. He himself made the announcement. So then, in the record of this deliverance, you see the anger of the king, the activity of the king, the amazement of the king, the acknowledgement of the king, and the announcement of the king. Now we look at the reason why were they delivered. Why well, see the Lord moved in and he preserved them from the flame and the power of the fire. There are four things we're going to think about. Number one is because of their absolute commitment to God. Their absolute commitment to God. Uh, they must have been thinking, they must have been meditating on the words of the psalmist. In Psalm 57, Psalm 57, these uh, Hebrew children, they had their minds made up. That they were not going to serve any idol. And, it's, and uh, these are the words, Psalm 57 verse 7, my heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. If you will make up your mind, you have taken a decision to follow the Lord. You have taken a decision to serve the Lord. And you are saying, my heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I'm telling you that in any problem, in any fire, in any conflict, in any uh, adversity or tragedy, you will sail through without being hurt in Jesus' name. In Psalm 108 verse 1, O God, my heart is fixed. O God, my heart is fixed. And then in Psalm 112 and in verse 7, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Number one then, absolute commitment to God. Number two, absolute confidence in God. And that's what we'll see as they replied uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter at all. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us absolute confidence in God. Number three, absolute courage for God. Absolute courage for God. They were fearless. They were bold. They were courageous. And he said, do what you want and do what you will. We've made up our minds. We're not going to fall down. Number four, absolute consciousness of God. Although they were thrown into the fire, eventually the fourth man, uh, that is the fourth person, came to them in that fire. And the form of uh, that person was like unto the Son of God. Companionship of the Lord. Absolute consciousness of the presence of the Lord. You see, these uh, three Hebrew children could have made excuses. They could have said, Daniel is not around because we couldn't, we can't see his name in this chapter. And he must have gone on a particular errand. He must have gone to do something that made him to be out of town. And they could have said, the one that leads us, the one that challenges us, the one influencing us, the one motivating us to righteousness, after all, it's not around. Let's just do something now. They didn't give that excuse. And they didn't say, well, if we don't fall down, the consequence will be too great. We may not be able to um, endure the consequence. Or they might have said, we're going to lose our post and position. This man has just exalted us in chapter 2. And if we don't fall down now, we're in a foreign land. And are we not going to even miss the possibility of greater privilege and opportunity in the future? They never gave any excuse. They had absolute commitment to God. Absolute confidence in God. Absolute courage for God. An absolute consciousness of God. Then we talk about the result of their deliverance. What do we see? 
happened as a result of their deliverance. Number one is the punishment of their enemies. The people that bound them up and cast them into the fire, they were all burnt up that you find in verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Number two, the protection from God. They were protected. They were cast in. All the courts were burnt. They rose up, and they were walking freely. In fact, when they were examined, there was no smell of the odor of uh, the fire on them. Number three, the presence of a divine companion. The presence of a divine companion. The Lord Jesus Christ, this is what we call Theophany. He appeared, his appearance, his manifestation, uh, before he actually was born, before his incarnation. He came to the present with them. Number four is the power of God. The power to quench the power of the fire or to stop uh, the flame uh, from burning them. The power of God. Number five, the proclamation that concerns God. Nebuchadnezzar himself eventually made a proclamation. Number six, the promotion of the faithful. Look at Bastachi. In Bastachi, we are told then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. And in the province of Babylon. Brothers and sisters, you will see the unsurpassed deliverance. And this God, he has not changed. He remains ever the same. And today, if you are going through anything, he will deliver you in Jesus' name. Are you committed to God? Are you courageous for God? Do you have confidence in God? You will be conscious of the very presence of the Lord. Your enemies may be punished, but there will be the protection, the presence, the power of God upon your life in Jesus' name. In the world today, there is still a Nebuchadnezzar out there. It may be on your campus, it may be at home, it may be in your village, and they are saying you must bow down. They say, bow or burn. And you say, I will not bow. They say, if you are not going to bow, you are going to burn. And you say, no way, because there is a God with me. I will not bow and I will not burn. The Lord will protect your life. He will give you a great deliverance if you will stand for the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord will give you a gift of faith. Dynamic faith. Faith that cannot be denied. That will make you to pass through the fire, it will not burn you. And through the waters, it will not drown you. And you will be able to declare the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now. And we're going to talk to the Lord. The Lord will preserve these Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He will preserve us too. He will preserve your life. Nothing can touch your life. Nothing can destroy your life. Nothing can drown you in that river. And nothing can destroy you in that fire. Because our God is able. Our God is able. Our God is able. Able to deliver. Able to protect able to preserve our God is able Don't let anyone or anything terrify you have faith in God. Don't let a man, a woman terrify you, frighten you, have faith in God. If the Lord is on your side, if God be for us, who can be against us? Commitment to God. Confidence in God.
courage for God? Do you have a consciousness of the presence of God? Commitment to God. Courage for God. Confidence in God. Then you will have the consciousness of the presence of the Lord. There's nobody as terrible as Nebuchadnezzar in your life. Nobody as cruel as Nebuchadnezzar in your village. And even if there were somebody there trying to frighten you, threaten you, telling you you must backslide, that if you don't backslide, that's what you will do, that's what you will do. And he's asking the challenging question, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? Have faith in God. Be bold and fearless and be faithful to God. Our God whom we serve. Our God whom we serve. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us out of your hand, O King. Because our God is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above, above all that we ask or think according to that power that worketh in us. Absolute commitment to God. Absolute confidence in God. Absolute courage for God. There is an absolute consciousness of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Has our God changed? Is he still able to deliver today? Will he deliver you? I said, will he deliver you? Let's bow and eyes closed. I want you to think now. Don't talk, just think of the greatest thing you are afraid of. And the most cruel individual you are afraid of. And think of the curse that somebody put upon you. And think of the dream that has frightened you the most since you became conscious of having dreams. Think of the threat of a man with occultic power, a woman with occultic power. 
the highest, the greatest, the most terrible thing that has ever made you most afraid, frightened. Think about it now. And look at that thing, imagine, visualize that that individual or even that curse, look at that curse, that threat as a tangible thing. Look at it like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego looked at Nebuchadnezzar. Picture it well in your mind. Look at that thing you have been thinking, this will destroy my life. Maybe even a bad habit. You can't shake yourself free from it. It threatens your life that you are not going to make progress after this point. And the picture is always in your mind. Makes you afraid. Look at that thing right now. And then say this after me. My God is able, God is able. to deliver me out of this thing and he will deliver me the world will be amazed the world will make an announcement they will acknowledge that my God is the most high Now from this afternoon, you don't think about nothing after this prayer again. You walk through water, you walk your way. You walk through fire, you go to your progress. You walk by past the harbor leaves. You don't even have a second thought about them. You walk through all the threats. You walk through all their charms. You walk through all the things they are saying. You don't even feel that anybody is around. You walk through all those dreams and you don't think there's any bad dream in your life at all. A new chapter is going to begin in your life. New things are going to begin to happen. The fire from today will no longer burn you. The water, the river from today will never be able to drown you. Nebuchadnezzar will not be able to burn you up. Yours is the victory. And even the people that said they will not make progress, they themselves will sign the paper of your promotion. Heavenly Father, we thank you because we have come to the place of victory. We have come to the place of triumph. Lord, everything that has ever made them afraid, everything they have been thinking, meditating upon, that this will crush me, this will destroy me, this will stop my progress, this will make me like a foolish fellow, this will make my certificate worthless. This will not allow me to make any progress. They won't allow me to enjoy the work of my hand. Oh Lord, I cancel those things in Jesus' name. Every weapon that rises up that is formed against these people. Every tongue that speaks against them. That causes them. That, uh, that uh, will cause them. Oh Lord, I silence them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that from today, the fire of the devil, the fire of demons, the fire of the world, the fire of the herbalists, the fire of the bad people of the world will never burn them in Jesus' name. The curse of the bad people of the world the curse of the occultic people of the world will never have any effect upon them anymore in jesus name all the past effect of the curse of the threat all the past effect of all the charms and the spell 
that anybody cast on any of them here i remove that effect right now and i pray you set them free in jesus name the failure of the past is cancelled the defeat of the past is cancelled lord that promotion that you have willed that you have decreed that you have planned for your children here give them that promotion in jesus name i pray that every brother here every sister here will become a wonder to the world an amazement to the kings and the powerful rulers of this world they'll walk through this life free from the cord of nebuchadnezzar binding them they'll walk through this life free from all the yoke and all the bondages binding the people of the world lord i pray that at this very time a new thing will begin in every life in jesus name lord there is a new chapter now to be reaching there is a new book now to be reaching there is a new biography now to be written of everyone here i pray it will be so in jesus name i pray O oh lord that even the people that have been looking down on them before they will look up before they can see their face weakness take it away sickness take that away infirmity take it away loss of memory take it away failure take it away fear take it away cause charm anything take it away a new life has begun a new chapter has begun and we will live like the children of the king in jesus name we thank you because we know you have done it in jesus mighty name